Okay, so this is a basic introduction to Pro Tools. Uh, in this particular video we'll probably cover how to create a session and uh, how to import some audio files into that session. Um, you'll probably find it's a little bit disjointed because um, I'm kind of doing it on the fly. Um, but this should at least give you a basic guide as to how to use the program. Um, <clears throat> Uh, one thing to point out to start off with is that the second drive that you have on the systems in the labs is called audio and the first one obviously is system. System has all your system uh, program files and so on on it and that's not to be touched and I don't think you can anyway because I think it's uh, restricted access. The audio drive is where you should be storing all your um, documents if you are working in Pro Tools. If I open that drive, all the things down the left hand side here uh, refer to your personal drive on the server and that's not the same. Okay, So audio drive is always local so it's going to be stored on the computer that you're sitting in front of. Um, the places refers to your, um, uh, the, your, your place on the server uh, which is stored remotely and Pro Tools won't like anything uh, or won't open any files that you try and store on that drive. There's, that's not to say you shouldn't back your stuff up to there when you've finished working on it so that when you come to work on a different machine, say, you can't drag it off again and put it somewhere else. Um, but you would always have to put it onto the audio drive of the machine that you happen to be working on at any particular time. I hope that's, that makes sense. Um, so that's just to point that out. Um, to find Pro Tools, you can either um, it may well, I'm on a slightly different. Oh, hang on, am I? No, I'm not. Um, on the uh, dock of your of the machine that you're working on, uh, Pro Tools comes up as the circle with the squiggle in it. Um, click on that, as with all programs with Mac, and it will open. <coughs> now, occasionally, when you do that, as it happened to me this morning, um, you'll get a, a a message box coming up saying that it can't open Pro Tools because the uh, the necessary hardware isn't ready. Um, in fact what I'll do is I'll quit this for now and start again and turn the hardware off. And halfway through the load it will come up with this. So unable to locate the design hardware. <clears throat> if you find you have that and then what you should do is check the connection from your 002 which should be right next to the machine um, <clears throat> to the Mac that you're working on. Um, uh, if that's fine, make sure that the DigiDesign, uh, the, uh, sorry, Digi002 is on. If it isn't, then obviously switch it on. If it is, then try switching it off and then on again. For some reason that somehow sometimes works. So try that. Um, I will try that now. Switch it on. Um, and then click OK when you're done. Uh, it might take a little while, and then once you've finished, it will it will continue to load. <clears throat> so as with all Mac programs, once you've opened it, um, I'm going to get rid of this for now. I don't need that open. Uh, you will not necessarily see anything. Um, the uh, Pro Tools um, menu at the top left-hand corner shows you that you've actually opened the application, but you won't see any windows to start off with. Um, to see those, you'll need to actually open a document and a session. Um, so to do that, you need to go to the File menu and click on New Session. <clears throat> and it asks you to name the session and obviously put it somewhere. So if you remember what I just said, you'll need to put that in the audio drive. So put that there. Um, what I suggest is that you make a new folder with your name on it um, so that all the necessary documents, because it will store not only the session file, but it will also store audio files um, within that place. Now if you have it just in the audio drive then it, it'll go all over the place, you won't be able to find it. So make your own folder, new folder, um, I'll call mine Peter Bachelor. Um, I might even put the data on actually. You'll notice I'm doing this in mid-September. So um, create that um, and then obviously name your session, so we'll call that uh, first session. Now what I tend to do, um, or I tend to recommend, um, it's entirely up to you of course, but if sometimes if you 
uh, for some reason things might get stored in the right place uh, or you might lose files or whatever and I'm sure you can imagine there's an awful lot of files out there which are called for example session or my session or untitled uh, and you're gonna have a hell of a job trying to find your work um, you know uh, as opposed to somebody else's so what you might want to do is to put in your initials um, just as a uh, at the end of that uh, name it's just a, a suggestion you may not want to do that okay um, what else is in this window uh, you have the audio file type now that refers to the types of files that you will be that Pro Tools will convert whatever you import into it to or whatever you record into it will be saved as a .wav file um, obviously we'll talk about the differences between those files um, in lectures but for now we'll, we, we won't bother about that I should leave that as WAV because it's recognized over a variety of different platforms sample rate um, you can choose 44.1 uh, which is obviously the, uh, the rate used on CDs um, or you could choose a higher one uh, the, the important thing is obviously all of your files will be um, converted to that sample rate so if you've recorded in uh, at 44.1 uh, it will be converted to 96 kilohertz uh, for this session I'm going to leave it at 44.1 for the time being bit depth <coughs> you can do either what I would recommend is for the purposes of your mixing you mix at least in 24 bit what will happen is that your files will be converted down to 16 bit when you want to burn to CD because CD will only accept 16 bit files for now though as I say um, for your session I should leave it at 24 bit um, IO settings you should be able to leave okay so save that and it comes up with your main uh, window. There's actually two windows for um, Pro Tools. There's the, uh, there's the editing window, which is this one, um, and then there is a mixer window, uh, which we will look at in a minute. Actually, I can open it now, uh, but you won't see very much because we don't have any tracks yet. Okay. Now you can you can obviously toggle between those by clicking the menu bars and you will move between them like that. You can also do it from this window. So I can go between the edit window and the mix window. Uh, I don't know what's happened to my mouse. <coughs> and or you can press command and equals and that will also toggle between them. That actually gets more useful if you have your edit window, for example, fully in the entire screen and you want to switch between them. That's a quick a quick key that's quite useful to know. So, um, editing, or sorry, making some tracks, uh, you will um, be able to do that by going to the track menu up here and selecting new. And it comes up with a dialog box which obviously gives you various options for that. Um, you can make mono or stereo tracks. Uh, you will likely be working in stereo if you're doing. Um, stereo recordings, I don't know, it really depends what you happen to have worked on in the studio. For now I'm going to make stereo tracks and obviously you can make more than one of those. I'll make three of them for now. Uh, you can make um, other input tracks as well. We will investigate some of these later. MIDI in Pro Tools is relatively weak. Um, I think they've improved that significantly in Pro Tools 8 but we are currently dealing with Pro Tools 7. Um, and for the purposes of the course, we will largely be working with audio anyway. So, um, so as I say, I'll leave it at audio track for now. Um, and then in samples is fine. So create. And there are your tracks. So they appear both in the editing window here um, and in the mixer window. And this format is fairly generic for most... Um, for most sequencing packages, um, you will have audio files in this, sorry, audio tracks in this kind of horizontal configuration for um, for the main editing window, and then you will obviously have a, a virtual mixing environment in the mix window. Um, <clears throat> so you have tracks arranged down the side on the left-hand side, and then you have time, 
um, being represented in the horizontal 